Hello everyone, welcome to Learn with DB. In this video, we will learn about a keyword extraction technique called TF-IDF. So let's say you have a large text data and the text data could be anything related to product reviews, tweets, social media comments or a survey that you had rolled out in your organization. Now let's say you want to understand what are the different things people are talking about in this text data. But the problem is it could be quite tedious and time consuming for you to read through every comment and understand what people are talking about. And that's where techniques like TF-IDF comes into picture. These keyword extraction techniques can help you save a lot of time by automatically extracting the keywords from the text. So now first let's get familiar with some of the terminologies. The first one is document. So document is nothing but each row in a text data. For example, if you have, let's say a uh, survey related data and there are like, let's say hundred rows, right? Hundred rows of feedback. Now each feedback in that survey would be considered as a document. Next term is corpus. Corpus is collection of all the documents. If you have a text data, all the rows together, it can be considered as a corpus. Then we have the term frequency. So term frequency is what gives you an idea about how frequently a term occurs in a document. For example, let's consider the sentence sun is shining and weather is sweet. So in this particular sentence, the term frequency for the word sun is one by seven because the number of words in that sentence is seven and sun has occurred once. Similarly, the term frequency for the word is is 2 by 7 right because the word is has occurred twice and the total number of words is 7. Next is IDF inverse document frequency. So this gives you an idea about how frequently a term has occurred across all the documents right. So basically if a term has occurred more frequently across the different documents then the IDF value would be low because it's an inverse of the document frequency and similarly if a particular term has occurred fewer number of times across different documents then the IDF value would be higher. So for example let's consider these two sentences sun is shining and weather is sweet here comes the sun. So the IDF for the word sun here is log of 2 by 2 that is total number of documents are 2 and the word sun has occurred in both the documents right. And now if we consider the word idea for the word shining, that would be log of two by one because total number of sentences are two, uh, but the word shining has occurred in only one document. So TF IDF is nothing but the product of both term frequency and IDF uh, inverse document frequency. And basically TF IDF gives less weightage to words that have been repeated across the documents but more weightage to words that have been used in fewer documents but repetitively in the same document. Now let's understand TF-IDF better with another example. Let's say you had movie reviews data and you had three reviews just like what you see in the screen. The movie was great, the movie was good but slow, the movie was boring. Now. In this, you can see that the keywords what we will be looking for are words like great, good, slow or boring, right? Because these are the words which tells us something unique about each of the review. Now let's see how TF-IDF can help us in identifying these keywords. So first what we create is something called as count matrix. So here what we do is that for each word, we will have a separate column. And within each column, we will mention what is the count for that particular word in each sentence. So whatever the non-zero values, you can see here, I have highlighted it in gray. For example, let's say the first sentence, the movie was great. Now here, you can see that the columns with the movie was great. These four words have, have the value one because each of these word have appeared once in the sentence and rest of them have not appeared in the sentence hence they have the value 0 and if you add up you will you should get the total number of words in each of the sentence so in the first sentence it is 4 similarly 6 and 4 in the other two sentences so term frequency for a word 
is number of times the word has occurred in a sentence divided by total number of words in that sentence. So for example, in the first sentence, the movie was great. The word movie had occurred once, whereas the total number of words in that sentence were four. So you can see the term frequency for the word movie is one by four. Similarly, in the second sentence, the movie was good but slow. You can see that the value for the uh, word movie is one by six. That is because the total number of words in that sentence is six, whereas movie had occurred only once in that sentence. So let's look at IDF values. IDF values is total number of documents divided by number of documents where the word has occurred. So for example, for the word movie, the total number of documents are three and the number of documents where the word movie has occurred is also three. So the value would be log of three by three, that is log of one, which is nothing but zero. And the log is used mainly for scaling purposes. Let's take another example, the word good. Here, the idea of value would be log of three by one. That is because total number of documents are three, whereas the number of documents where the word good has occurred is one. Now, we can multiply the term frequency values with the IDF values to get the TF IDF value as you see in this table. In this table, we have TF IDF at a document level. So, if we want to summarize the, the TF IDF values at a corpus level, we can take the average of the TF IDF values across the documents. As you can see here, TFIDF has successfully identified the keywords such as great, good, but, slow, and boring, right? These were the unique keywords which we wanted to identify from the corpus. Now, one more question what you might have in your mind is that the word like but is a conjunction and how can it be a keyword? This can be considered as a drawback of TFIDF since sometimes non-keywords may get high TF-IDF scores assigned. There are several ways of handling this and one of the ways is by preparing a list of stop words. That is basically preparing a list of words that includes prepositions, conjunctions, pronouns, etc. Or you could use already available libraries such as NLTK which has list of predefined stop words. The stop words can be removed from corpus before applying TF-IDF. Now let's apply TF-IDF to a real world data set. So I have downloaded a data set from Kaggle. You can download it from the link mentioned here. So this data set is mainly related to tweets that are related to COVID. So you would need these set of libraries in order to carry out the analysis. The warnings related library is optional, but you would need the rest of the libraries that I have imported in order to carry out the analysis. Now, let me import the data set and see how it looks like. So I have imported the data set into a pandas data frame. And you can see that there are around 41,000 rows here. And as you can see, if you had to manually go through each of these tweets and understand what are the different things people are talking about, uh, that would take you ages, right? And now this is where algorithms like TF-IDF can help us understand what are the different things people are talking about even without us having to go through all the text. Now, before applying TF-IDF to the data set, we will first have to carry out the data pre-processing. So as you can see here, first thing what I did is that I have made sure that every single row in the column text field, it gets converted into string. And then I have imported the WordNet lemmatizer from the NLTK library. So lemmatization is the process of identifying the root word of any given word. So this helps in standardizing the 
words that we have in the data set and then i have also imported the stop words from the nltk library so these are the predefined set of stop words that we will be using then i have created an empty list corpus so this is where we will be storing our final uh, data set which has been pre processed so now let's look at the pre processing code so what i have done here is that i have used the regular expression library in order to remove the non alphabetic characters and also the numbers and then i have converted the all the text to the lower cases and then what i will be doing is i will split that particular sentence into a list and then i will go through each word in the list and convert it into their root word and once i have done that i will check if that particular word is present in the stop words and if it is present in the stop words i would be basically removing them and finally i will join them back and append into them into a corpus so let's look at how the corpus looks like so as you can see here we have got a list of tweets that has been pre processed now let's apply tfidf to the pre processed data so for this we would need something called as tfidf vectorizer so this is something which we can import from the sklearn library so i'll import it now this is how you call the tfidf vectorizer so you will have to assign something called as an ngram range so what this ngram range is it tells tfidf vectorizer as to how many words it should consider in order to calculate the tfidf score right so for example when i have given it as 1 comma 1 what the tfidf vectorizer would do is that it would calculate tfidf score for every single word similarly if i had given it as 2 comma 2 then the tfidf vectorizer would have calculated the tfidf score for every combination of two consecutive words and that every combination of two consecutive words is something what we called as bigrams so once i call the tfidf vectorizer apply the tfidf vectorizer to the pre processed data that is the corpus uh, that we have here so let me do that so once i do this what you can see here is that the tfidf vectorizer has created a csr matrix so this is nothing but a table which looks similar to the one which we had discussed earlier in this video now what we can do is that we can calculate the mean tfidf scores of the each word so let me do that as you can see it has created an a array of uh, the average scores uh, i will just convert it into a pandas data frame so that it's easier for us to read the data along with the headers so as you can see for every single word the tfidf vectorizer has calculated an average tfidf score so i will do some more uh, data transformation here i will transform this pandas data frame and then i'll just uh, rename the columns so now you can see here so for each word i have the tf average tfidf score calculated i would also need this index in a separate column so i will do that and along after that i'll also sort the values in a decreasing order so as you can see now we have all these keywords uh, sorted by their tfidf score right uh, and since there are so many words here uh, if you want like let's say only top 50 keywords what you can do is you can simply let's say if, if i want only 50 keywords 
I would just filter out only the top 50 ones. So here are my the top 50 keywords based on the TF-IDF score. Now, as you can see here, you, uh, there, are, there are certain words which, for example, CO, HTTP, uh, COVID, coronavirus makes sense because that is probably more frequently mentioned, store, price, supermarket, that makes sense. Apart from that, AMP, HA. So there are certain words I want to remove it from the corpus because although the very high TF IDF score has been assigned, they are not giving any key insight to us, right? So what we can do is we can extend our stop words list and rerun the code, right? So what I will do is basically I will write stop underscore words dot extend and I will mention the some of the top keywords uh, which I want to remove from the corpus. So let's see average. So I don't want CO. I'll remove HTTP. I'll remove COVID. So yeah, I mean if you want you can keep COVID and coronavirus but now in our case since we already know that data is related to COVID we do not want it here. Let's see what are the other things that people are actually talking about. Uh, COVID, coronavirus and apart from that I will also remove AMP, HA. get I think get is fine go is fine all right so let's uh, remove these top words and then again see what all the topics look like so i'll rerun the code now okay so you can see the topics now uh, it's mainly related to store price supermarket grocery food people yeah, so some of these keywords make sense, right? Uh, people are talking about, you know, uh, th there might be an uh, issue with the supply of the food or they might be talking about uh, something related to they are not able to go to the grocery store or the supermarket is closed. So all these different situations we had faced, right? Yeah, so now the thing is that we are kind of only assuming that what people might be talking about right so uh, we would need little bit more context around this so what we can do is we can apply another round of uh, tf idf but this time what we can do is we can take the ngram range 3 comma 3 and let's see this time how the results look like for uh, tf idf with uh, with the trigrams so as you can see, a new pandas data frame has been created called average bigram. Uh, although I named it as bigram, uh, these are actually the trigrams. So you can see here all the trigrams uh, sorted by their TF-IDF score. So we can see here people are talking about grocery store worker, go grocery store, local grocery store. So mainly these are the trigrams related to grocery shopping. Uh, then also people are suggesting to stop panic buying people are talking about food supply chain low oil price use hand sanitizer so all these make sense right because these are the situations even we faced during the covid but we want to look at these trigrams in a more structured format right uh, we want to club them together uh, all the similar uh, trigrams together. So what we can do is that uh, we can consider uh, these set of trigrams as subtopics and whatever the initial uh, unigrams whatever we had created. So th this can be considered as the topic right the unigrams what we have here and what we can do is that try to 
link these two as topics and subtopics right so for example i would look for this particular topic that is store and see which are the trigrams here which has the word store in it and we can tag those trigrams under this topic right as a subtopic so let's do that so i have uh, written a code for the same so what i am doing is that i am checking uh, for each of the uh, unigram if if it is present in the trigrams and tagging them against uh, that particular unigram and also i am doing it for five subtopics right uh, so i am just checking the top five trigrams for each unigram so let's uh, run this code that would give you a better idea of what I am trying to do. Okay. So this is the new data frame that's created. So this is how the results look like, right? So now against each topic, you have a subtopic, right? So for store, you can see that people are talking about going to grocery store. Or people are talking about low uh, prices, right? Mainly talking about gas price being low, falling oil price, crude oil price. Then people are talking about supermarket within that they are facing empty supermarket shelves, uh, supermarket delivery slot. People are also talking about sanitizers, making hand sanitizer, use hand sanitizer. People are suggesting to stay at home. Regarding online shopping, people are talking about uh, surge in online shopping then uh, in consumer there might have been talks about you know impact on the consumer behavior uh, consumer sentiment crisis in the people you can see people are panic buying also there are people are talking about demand increasing food demand so all this gives us a much better idea right uh, so if you compare this with the initial data set we had of 40,000 rows, this is a much better structured format, right? Where you just have 50 rows of data and without even going through a, any single tweet, now you have a much better idea about what are the different things people are talking about, right? So this, this is the main value add of the TF-IDF. Now, obviously there are things that can be improved here such as uh, uh, you know there are repeating subtopics like what you see here online shopping behavior online shopping delivery they have repeated twice uh, but you know there are ways to handle that i will not uh, go into that in this video because the objective of this video was mainly to give you an idea about how we can use tfidf uh, to extract keywords from a large uh, text data and help you automate uh, the process of keyword extraction hope you guys learned something new in this video if you have any queries please ask in the comments for more such videos please subscribe to my channel learn with db